Hi, Ozzy here, and I'm here to give you seven tips on how to save money when it comes to buying musical gear. Now, I've been someone that scoured websites like Reverb.com or eBay when it comes to searching for new gear. I've searched for new guitars, for new pickups, for new pedals, lots of pedals. So believe you me, I spend quite a bit of money flipping guitars back and forth, and only recently I've really tried to cut down on my gear consumption. Now, step number one of saving money to buy gear. Don't buy the gear in the first place. Now, I promise it's not a troll is don't click away, but let's follow that logic to its to its end, right? Best way to save yourself the hassle of saving, of scrounging, of extending your credit cards, of working the street corner, whatever, is not to buy the gear in the first place, right? Now, I understand that, you know, we all have that need to get that new, shining, gleamy piece of gear that'll make all the difference in your tone. It won't, by the way. So, or maybe just something that will uh, really help your workflow or make it life convenient for you. And it's not wrong to want those things and to improve your current processes or search for that new tone. However, we are adults here, at least I hope we are, so let's practice self-restraint. And when in doubt, really sleep on it and ask yourself, do I really need another guitar? Do I really need this new set of pickups? And if the question is yes, then go ahead and buy it. Don't, I don't have any remorse about buying things. In today's world of YouTube influencers, it's gotten both better and worse when it comes to gear. Better because you're, you're exposed to things that you would not able to or that you would not look for yourself. Like maybe uh, in the digital world, you get this cool new VST is gonna save you a lot of time editing. Or for example, it's the pedal for that effect that you've been hearing on records that you just didn't know existed. Now, the problem with that, of course, is that there's still people that are being paid, so they're gonna make that gear look nice. And their end goal is essentially to move product. So you buying it essentially feeds into the system. Now, how you feel about that is completely up to you. It doesn't really matter. You either buy things or you don't buy things. Anyways, number two. Learn to change strings and do your own setups. Now, I've noticed there are two types of people, right? There's people that pimp out their new Stratocaster by putting crazy new pickups, or swapping out parts left and right. Uh, and then there's people that essentially go to Guitar Center, say, fuck it, put on those sick freaking Invaders or that Dime Bucker into my Razorback guitar, yeah. And then, of course, they get a Floyd Rose, and that's a big whole thing to set up. Most of my guitars have Floyd Rose bridges, so I really understand the pain. Now, pickups and strings are getting really pricey, especially strings. They're making them fancy. They're giving them cobalt kind. They're giving them silver, paradigm, extra aerodynamic, frozen, vegan, gluten-free strings. Just all kinds of crazy shit just to spend more money on a piece of fucking wire. Same thing with pickups. I mean, in reality, it's just a magnet that picks things up. But... Of course, they all have their own tones, and it's, the whole industry has been built on this idea of tone chasing. If you're able to set up your own guitar, if you're able to change strings, and able to intonate, for example, a Floyd Rose bridge yourself, you're saving a lot of money not having to take your guitar to a shop and having someone else do it. Same thing with pickups. If you're able to solder your own pickups into your things and swap things out on the fly, you don't have to take your guitar into the shop and spend money on doing things. When it comes to adjusting intonation or just minor adjustments, those things are not negotiable. Number three, consider investing in a modeler or an FX unit. Right? This also applies to VSTs and plugins, but it's the same kind of idea. Future is now, man. So, we're able to get amazing tones from tons of different gear, all at a click of a mouse with that stupid wheel thingy. No longer do we need to beg, borrow, or steal gear. We all have that inside of that one magical box or that unit or that rack or whatever it is, right? Now, I'm not gonna argue the quality of the tone. Oh, it doesn't sound the same or it's digital or any of that BS. That's not the point. The point is you're saving money by buying one unit one time instead of buying 20, 30 bajillion pedals that you don't know if you're gonna like. What if you buy an Octaver and you hate the sound of it? What if you uh, buy a fuzz pedal then all of a sudden hate the fuzz sound it makes? Also, we're talking maintenance. We're also talking switching batteries, switching patch cables, getting a pedal board to support it all, carrying things around, just a lot of things like that. Side note. If you're one of those people that carries more than two pedals without a pedal board and connects it during the show while you're playing, you probably text and drive. Fuck you. I'm just kidding. Do, what you, do whatever you want. Number four, buy used whenever possible. Now, whether it be used, open box, mint condition, B stock, all the way down to fucking Spanky from Craigslist selling, you know, one of his old guitars for weed money, doesn't matter. It's all fair game. Just as long as you know what you're getting into. Now, I'm sure many of you had gas, gear acquisition syndrome, and bought yourself a new guitar, or bought yourself a pedal or something. You play around with it for a few weeks, then it was standing there collecting dust, and eventually you put it up on Reverb or eBay.com or something, and you try to sell it off for the fraction of the price. Now, most people on Reverb 
Bieber are probably going to be in the same boat as you are. They got something to play for it and now they're taking a loss. Now this creates a great used market for buyers since you're pretty much buying a new instrument with somebody messing around with it for a few hours and not getting the result that they want. Now this creates a great used market since essentially you're buying a piece of gear that's been lightly used by somebody who didn't get its full potential. Now whether you continue that process on and you buy something, you play around with it for three months and send it over, or you actually keep that piece of gear and it becomes an essential sound, a part of your sound, it really doesn't matter. The point is, you got it cheaper. If you bought it, play with it and sold it, you maybe lost 10% of its value versus if you buy it new. Now this does mean being patient and waiting, monitoring prices, like Reverb.com especially has the option to watch things and really wait for things to come along. This also again feeds into the habit because you're constantly watching, you're constantly getting riled up about that new cool guitar or that new pedal or whatever it is. This brings me to point number five, always keep the original parts. Now this does not apply to boxes or whatever but that's fine as well. Now I know we all had that moment where we buy a first guitar or a first cool pedal and it's like I'm gonna keep this forever, it's gonna be part of my tone officially. But just like your first girlfriend, that shit ain't lasting forever. Chances are you're gonna break up and chances are you're gonna sell that Squire or whatever the hell you had as your first guitar. Now so this means do not toss away the original pickups, not to toss away the original knobs, keep the tuning machines if you swap those out, keep all the original parts because when the time comes to sell and that time will come it's better to be prepared it's better to keep all those parts and sell it backward because adding you know those sick $200 Seymour Duncans is not gonna increase the value even though you think it there's been a lot of cases where again a person would buy that sick Dean or that BC Ridge guitar or whatever and they put invaders in them and they get strap locks and they slip all these crazy shit in there right and Guitar Center gives them exactly the value of that guitar minus whatever 40% or how much should they take doesn't really matter you've spent a lot of money customizing it but it just does not matter I recommend keeping those parts in a ziplock bag and storing them somewhere uh, that it's not easy enough to reach. Number six, research everything. Now, like I said, because of YouTube, we have these demos that, that demo everything down to the most minute details. Researching what kind of pickup you like or what kind of power tube you want or any of that other shit. But do not dismiss the old brick and mortar stores, even Guitar Center, if you have to. Go to your real stores, try out those guitars, see how they feel. That's the more important part. And when it comes to amps, even better. If you have this amp that you've been looking into, go into Guitar Center, crank it if you have to. They will complain, but you wanna make sure that you're getting the product you want. You're spending lots of money so you want to make sure it's going somewhere right. With VSTs and plugins it's even better because they give you a trial period where you get to try out the full functionality for a certain amount of days. Now I don't condone this but you could also be sailing the Pirates Bay to get whatever plugin you want. But please, after done, if you think it's worthy, please buy the plugin. Reaper is a great example of that too because some people have evaluated Reaper for almost 10 goddamn years. Relationships lasted less than the Reaper trial. So please just give them that $60, they really do damn deserve it, okay? Anyways, back on the point. And number seven, kind of a cheesy one, but appreciate the gear you already have. Yes, yes, getting hippie, getting whatever. But still, we have knobs on pedals for a reason. You change your tone with simple, small adjustments, how you play, what kind of pick you use, what kind of strings. Again, when it comes to plugins, it's an infinite world of plugins out there. You're able to buy certain ones, get demos for certain things, or get free plugins. There's lots of freeware plugins that do amazing things. So some ch sometimes just switching things around, trying new things, and cranking the shit out of your volume to really get that sound you're looking for. Sometimes that's all it takes to really get you yourself, get yourself inspired without having to buy more gear. I hope that was helpful. If you got some more tips, let me know. If you disagree or agree, let me know. If you still kept your first guitar ever, let me know because I am curious where that thing lays now.